like strength, strength like no other. Lord God, you are my strength, Lord God. You are my strength like no other, Lord God. I call upon your name and I am saved and it reaches. I thank you, Lord God, in the fullness of your grace. We can your all say grace. in the power of your name. In the power of your name. You lift us up, Lord God. You lift, me up. you lift us out of depression, Lord God. You are lift us out of suicidal you ideation, Lord God. Up. You lift us up, Lord God, out of our debts, Lord God, in the fullness of your in grace. The fullness of say your in grace. the power of your name. In there is no the other name for which we can be saved. You lift me up. You lift me up. Well, Lord God, we declare and we decree, Lord God, that we are coming out, Lord God, on the better side of this, Lord God, because of your grace, Lord God. Uh, say, you are my. We thank you, Lord God. Strength like no Strength other. Like no other. I bless your holy name. Strength like no other, Lord God. Strength like we no thank you, Lord other. God. You reach, it reaches, it reaches, it reaches to me. Well, God, it not only reaches to myself, but it reaches to my family. It reaches to my grandchildren, my, my great great grandchildren. Generations, Lord God, your strength reaches. Strength like no other. Strength like, strength like no We thank you, Lord God. Reaches. reaches we thank you, Lord God, for all that you are and all that you do, Lord God. For you are an amazing God. We can all say, uh, in the power, in the thank you, Lord God. You are an awesome God. You lift me up. 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 Lift me up. We thank you, Lord God. Say it in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. In the power. In the power of your name. You lift me up. 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 Lift me up. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for all that you are doing, Lord God. Always and forever, Lord God. We cry out to you, Lord God. We surrender unto you, Lord God. We surrender our way, Lord God. We surrender our will for your will, Lord God. Because no matter what we're going through, Lord God, we can always call on you, Lord God. We can always call on you, Lord God. We can always call on you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Because your word declares, Lord God, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so I thank you, Lord God, as we take this moment right here to open up our mouths and make a sound unto you, Lord God. A sound of victory, Lord God, for you have given us the victory, Lord God. We make a sound unto you, Thank Lord you, God, Jesus. always and forever, Lord God, Hallelujah. because you are an awesome God, you, you are an amazing God, and you are my Hallelujah. strength like none Thank other, Lord Jesus. God. Thank when I look Jesus. back over Hallelujah. my life and all that you have brought me through, all that you have brought my family through, Lord God, I worship you, Lord God, because you are worthy Hallelujah. of it, Lord God. I worship you because you deserve Hallelujah. it, Lord God, and you are my strength. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you Jesus. are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like, strength like no other. Strength like, strength like. We thank no you, Lord God. Reaches, reaches to, to me. me. You are my strength, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. They used to sing a, you, sing a song. I don't know who, who's the author. I, I think it's, it's uh, oh, Heard, Stephen Heard uh, from the D.C. area. Um, and that is, uh, give God an undignified praise. Now, I, I'm from, excuse me, but I'm from the old school. And, okay, okay. I don't, I don't know what this cute praise y'all giving him now. This is too cute for me. I, I got to go someplace else. This is too cute. 
Where your power at? That's what I want to know. Where your Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. <laughs> I, I just want to know where your power at. Yes, God. Yes, I'm God. I'm like, my God, do we need to go on a fast or what, what, what do we need to do? You need to get some power Hallelujah, up in here. God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we do that again? And how many of y'all realize, I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to do a cappella because, because sometimes we have a tendency of hiding behind the music. What's your other song? All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, but is there anybody in here can testify? Hallelujah, Jesus. That he has been your strength. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like no other. Hallelujah. You would have lost your mind. You wouldn't be here today, but it was just yes, his God. strength. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And you're here today only because of his strength. I can I can lean on <laughs> I can lean on on brother Eddie Hallelujah. but his strength is not like God's strength. Hallelujah. Because he may Hallelujah. let me fall. He may cause me to fail. But when I lean on the Lord yes, He will not and cannot let me fall. Yes, so let's just do this again. You are my strength. I just I think I just can't change keys. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches, reaches to me. Come on, just tell them. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like. Strength like no, no other. Strength like no other. Strength like Come no on and tell them that. Hallelujah. Other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Hallelujah. You are my strength. You are my strength. Come on, you can tell them better. Hallelujah. Strength like. Strength like no other. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Come on, tell them you are my hope. You are my hope. You are my hope. Hallelujah. When hope yes. is gone. Hallelujah. Hope, hope like no other. How many of y'all can depend upon here? Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. You are my hope. You are. You are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches to me. Come on. In the fullness. In the fullness. In the fullness of Hallelujah. your grace. In the power. In the power Hallelujah. of your name. Hallelujah. You lift me up. Come on, let them lift you up. You lift me up. You lift me up. In the fullness, in the fullness, in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. Hallelujah. Grace. In the power. In the power of your name. Hallelujah. You lift, you lift me up. Hallelujah. Come on and tell them you lift me up. You, you lift me up. You are my strength. You are. You are my strength. Strength like no other strength like. Strength like no other. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Reaches. Come on, one more time. Me. Just tell the Lord. You are my strength. You are. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no, no other. other. Reach it to me. 
reaches to me, reaches to me, reaches to me, reaches to me. Hallelujah, it reaches to me, it reaches, reaches to me, reaches to me, reaches to me. Come on, if you need strength in this building today, come on, just lift your hands and surrender. Come on, just lift your hands and surrender. My God, God, we receive your strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, it reaches, hallelujah, to the highest mountain. Hallelujah, glory to God. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, the blood yes, Lord, that gives me strength. Hallelujah. Somebody needed to receive that. From day to day, it will never. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel churchy right now. Excuse yes, me. Lord, I said it will never, never, never lose. His power. Hallelujah. Thank God for his strength. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm looking for church right now. I said it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows. Glory to God. To the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. Blood. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but that gives me strength. Glory to God. I want to say that again. The blood that gives me strength. Hallelujah. From day, hallelujah, to day, it will never, see, that's the devil there, never lose. Is power. If you believe that, come on and just give the Lord a good praise. Come on and give the Lord a good praise in his house. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a good praise. Glory. Hallelujah. I need somebody to shout with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. How many of y'all realize that he deserved the praise? That's the reason why we came in here today. I said, that's the reason why we came in, just to give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things that I will always remember about uh, Elder Foreman, he said this, he says that we already know when we go to a club what we're going to do. We already know that we're not going to be standing on the wall. Well, some of y'all don't stand on the wall, but most of us don't stand on the wall. We, we want to dance. We want to, we want to, you know, whatever we do. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all also realize that when you come to church, you already know what you're going to do. The Bible has always, already told us what we're going to do when we come to the house of the Lord. You, Hallelujah. I will yes, enter God. his gates with Hallelujah. thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will enter his Hallelujah. courts with praise. I will say Hallelujah. this is the day that the Lord has made. And guess yes, what? God. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. I said, I will rejoice. 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 Hallelujah. And I'll be glad in it. That's the reason why I'm here. That's the reason why I'm standing. That's the reason why I'm in the house of the Lord. I come here to give him a rejoicing praise. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Paul said this, rejoice in the Lord always. And just in case you didn't get it the first time, again I say, hallelujah, rejoice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, y'all, let's give God a good, good, ugly praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve it, Lord God. You deserve it, Lord God. Nobody like you, Lord God. You deserve it, Lord God. We bless your holy name, Lord God. We honor you. We magnify you, Lord God, for you are worthy to be praised. And you deserve it, Lord God. Our hallelujah belongs to you, Lord God. 
Hey, thank you, Jesus. Right where you are, begin to open up your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Our hallelujah belongs to him. We send up the highest praise to you, Lord God, for nobody else deserves it but you. We thank you, Lord God. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah, y'all sound great. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Lord God. Say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are. My hallelujah belongs to my you. We thank you, Lord God. So I lift it up to you, Lord God, and say, you deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, you do, Lord God. You deserve all the praise. You deserve, you deserve all the honor, all the worship, all you the glory. For nobody else deserves it but you, Lord God. You deserve it. See, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Lord God, when we are in our mountaintops, Lord God, when we are in our valleys, Lord God, my and everything else in between, Lord God, my hallelujah belongs to you, Lord God. It is owed to you, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. My hallelujah belongs to you. See, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs, belongs to you. So we open up our mouths, Lord God, and we say, You deserve it. You deserve it. Nobody like you, Lord God. Nobody is worthy of it but you, Lord God. See, you deserve it. You deserve it, Lord God. Always and forever, Lord God. You deserve it. Belongs to you. We can say it. See all of the glory, Lord. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord. The glory belongs to you, Lord God. It belongs to you, Lord God. It belongs to you, Lord God. We give it to nobody else but you, Lord God. For you are deserving of it, Lord God. We open up our mouths and we just say, Lord God. We say, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You deserve it, Lord God. See, you deserve it. You deserve it. We lift up your holy name, Lord God. We lift up our worship and we lift up our praise, Lord God, because it all belongs to you, Lord God. It all belongs to you, Lord God. So we just go ahead and say, uh, Hallelujah. 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 Glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You deserve, you deserve it, Lord God. You deserve our worship. You deserve our praise, Lord God. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord God. It was you who kept me. It was you who kept my family, Lord God. It is you who kept my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord God. So we bless your holy name, Lord God. Always and forever, Lord God. But we hold firm to the faith that we profess in your name, Lord God. For you are solid rock and our prince of peace. You are our shield and our protector, Lord God. And we bless your holy name, Lord God. So we say, Hallelujah. 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 See all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Yeah. Say you deserve it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You deserve it, Lord God. You deserve it, Lord God. We bless your holy name, Lord God. And we say, you deserve it. We lift it up to you, Lord God. Our worship and our praise, Lord God, with a voice of triumph, Lord God. For you have given us the victory, Lord God. Everybody, under the sound of my voice, we make that declaration on one accord. My hallelujah belongs to you. 
nobody else. We make that declaration today and forevermore. My hallelujah. deserve it, Lord God. You deserve it, Lord God. Hallelujah. You deserve it, Lord God. You deserve it, Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, if you believe that, come on and let's just demonstrate it. Come on. Thank let's you, Let's demonstrate Jesus. it. Hallelujah. Thank you, come on, Jesus. demonstrate it. Thank you, you said Jesus. It. My you hallelujah. deserve it, Lord God. Hallelujah, My Jesus. hallelujah belongs to you. Come on. Just, just give it to him. Give it to him. Come on. You said it. You told him, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on. Give it to him. I said, you, you said it, then it belongs to you. Come on and give it to him. Give it to him this morning. Come on, give it to those of you who are online. Give it to him. I'm making this big out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve all of it. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. All my adoration from the bottom of my heart. You deserve it, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Look over and tell somebody and say, neighbor, defeat has a look, but victory has a sound. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. I said it has a sound. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I said God. victory has a sound. Hallelujah. Hey, my God. My God. My God. My God. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory God. has a sound. Make a sound yes, in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you know you have victory, make a sound Yahweh, in here. Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, you know you Yahweh, got victory, Yahweh, make, Yahweh, a Yahweh, Yahweh. Yes, God. make a sound. Yes, make a sound. Make a sound. Oh, ho, ho. Hallelujah. Oh, ho. Hallelujah. Oh, ho. Hallelujah. Oh, ho. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in a bow shot. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, we give you a sound in this place today. Jesus. We give you a sound in this place today. We give you a sound in this place today. Because in the name of Jesus, I said in the name of Jesus, hey, 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 I said in the name of Jesus, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. Every demon has to flee. Tell me who shall stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus. Yes, God. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, glory, 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 Thank glory. You, Hallelujah. Hey, shut ta 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 Hey, my, 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 my. My, 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 my. Yes, 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 yes. Well, 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 well. Well, 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 well. Hey, hey. Hasanda do the Oh, well, 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 well. Hey. Glory, you, glory, 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 glory. Come on and give it to him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of it. He's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, oh, bye. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's defeat the enemy with our praise. I said, let's defeat the enemy with our praise. I said, let's defeat the enemy with our praise. Yes, let's defeat the enemy with our praise. Let's cast them out of our mind. 
cast them out of this church. Cast them out of our hearts with our praise. Hey! Hollis! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus. Yeah. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. We give it to you, Jesus. We give it to you. 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 Hey. Yes, yes. My God. Somebody said when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Ah, my God. When the praises go up, the blessing. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. My God, my God. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Rain, Jesus, rain, 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 rain. Rain in this place. Rain in this sanctuary. Rain in our hearts. Rain in our minds. Rain, 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 rain. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. That's all I'm going to give you because these preachers get ready to come up. Come on, 30 seconds. Come on, give him a pray. Hey! Hallelujah! Oh, come on, you give him a good pray. Glory, 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 glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey! Ho, 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 ho. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for victory. I said thank you for victory. Up, oh, up, oh, oh, we got a runner. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. My God. Oh. Y'all on the praise and praise team. Show us how we do it. Hey. Praise him, Sister Karen. Praise him, Sister Evelyn. Hey. Hey. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, those of you who are at home, come on, you can join in also. Hallelujah. 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 
This is how we do it at the Oasis. <laughs> yeah, this is how we do it at the Oasis. My God. If you only knew what God was doing behind the scene. Oh, y'all don't hear what I Oh, bye. Hey, my God, you keep playing that. I'm going to run myself. Hallelujah. My God. If you only knew what God was doing behind the scene. But it was being held up because you wouldn't give him a praise. It was being held up because of the fact that you were stingy with your praise. Stingy with your thanksgiving. But now that you've given him the praise. Now that you've given him all you need. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. When the praises go up. That's what they say. I said when the praises go up. The blessings. Oh, shower down, shower down. Rain down, rain down. Pour down, pour down. Drench us, God. Drench us, drench us. Hey, drench us. My God. Drench us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Drench us. God, I give it to you. Hallelujah. 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 Yee, that's it. 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 My God. Hallelujah. Yes, child. My, 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 my. My, my, hey, shot. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, 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 God. I give you praise for it. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Yee. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You ought to praise him, Manny. Hallelujah. Listen, don't let anybody or anything stop your praise this morning. I get no more shot. Hey, God, I give you praise for it. Don't let anything or anyone stop your praise this morning. Hallelujah. You ought to praise him, Manny. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word says, let everything that have breath. Let every, ta, 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 ta. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Let everything that have breath. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give it to you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He. Oh, glory. <laughs> devil, you lose again. Hallelujah. I said, devil, you lose again. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo! Yeah, 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 Oh, thank you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Masha. Woo. Glory. My God. Thank you for doing it, Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, whatever you're doing. 
in this atmosphere. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me, Hesha. Don't do it without me, my God. Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. If you're blessing, don't do it without me. If you're healing, don't do it without me. If you're providing, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing, oh my God, don't do it without my oh hallelujah hallelujah dear God thank you for it thank you for it thank you for it yeah 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 shot hallelujah my God Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God. God, we won't let you go. We won't let you go. We won't let you go until you do it. Hallelujah. My God. We won't let you go until you do it. We won't let you go until you do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Ah, whatever you're doing, do it, do it, do it, do it. We won't let you go until you do it, Father. Do it until you're satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yee. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I'm trying to come out of this, but listen, I got to stay here for a few more moments. Hallelujah. Mm, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Come on, let's just do it without the music. Let's see if it's for real. Come on, let's see if it's for real. We're not going to hide behind the music. Let's see it for real. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, this is when you know that it's pure. Hallelujah. I said, this is when you know that it is pure. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you can praise him without the music, you know it's pure. You know it's for real. My God. You know it's genuine. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes. Glory to Jesus. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Here's what we're going to do. Thank you, praise team. We're going to put these preachers up. This is, this is a good time for y'all to get up. You don't have any barriers, nothing, no demon to fight it. He done took, on, took off and ran. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. If you can do it in, if you can do it in 15 minutes or less, that's great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, brothers. Y'all go ahead and give God praise right there. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, Deacon. Deacon Lee, Brother Manny, go ahead and just give God praise right there. That's how the men do it. That's how the men do it. That's it right there. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. I, I think we ought to give him praise because God is doing something. Uh, yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Hey, that's it, brother. Listen, don't let nothing stop your praise. Bless God. <laughs> don't let nothing stop your praise. All right, woman of God, are you ready? I'm getting ready to sit down. You get up, catch on fire, sit down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can cut yeah, down yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory, 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 glory. We have the victory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise because he's so good. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, God has already set the atmosphere. And Pastor Kamani last week already was in the house. And he already gave a segue to the message God had already given me. He said, be still. And he said, peace. And he said, it's already done. And he told you not to move. But my word today, God said, is to move forward. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, in moving forward, glory. And I'm going to read it just as God gave it to me. He said, you're going to be proof that God can do it. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. The universe agrees. I got this from my husband. The universe agrees with a made-up mind because God trusted you with your mess so that he can impact others with his message. So God trusted you with your mess so you can impact others others Manny you can impact others Lee hallelujah Jesus when you've fallen and you feel like you can't get up in your plans and your relationships yet hallelujah where you think you're a failure and no matter what you do it looks on every side like there's nothing that you can do but God said hallelujah that if you've fallen seven times he said a righteous man falls seven times and they get back up again but the wicked is not so Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So continue to fight the good fight of faith. 
because everyone makes mistakes. Come on, he says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Until we fully grasp this concept, we will continue going through life looking for change but feeling nothing. Hallelujah. So it's time for you to let go of your regrets. It's time for you to, to rebuke the shame. Hallelujah. And God said, use your mistakes as a teaching tool. You can bounce back and not repeat the cycle. If you learn the lesson, I've seen people do it over and over and over again. It starts with being transparent with yourself and taking accountability for the mistakes you've made. Because what the devil meant for evil, God said he'll turn it around for your good. So stop worrying about what other people think. Everybody's worrying about if I tell what happened, I'm going to be ashamed. But I declare and decree that today you are delivered from people and what they think. Get your mouth off God's people because he says you overcome by the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. And the blood of the lamb. So don't be ashamed because what could have killed you may kill somebody else. If you don't open your mouth, hallelujah. So stop being embarrassed. Stop being ashamed. Stop thinking that what you've been through, you can't talk about. So what? I went to jail. So what? I got married out of wedlock. Hallelujah. Had a baby out of wedlock. So what? I failed. Hallelujah. It's all right. The, the, the pastor said last week when he gave a prophecy, if it ain't for two years, what he say? If God revoked it and he erased it, then it ain't on you no more. Hallelujah. So it don't matter what nobody else think about you. Hallelujah. I tell you about shit. He said, don't let your failures go to waste. Hallelujah. He said, don't let your failures go to waste. He said, you must take responsibility for the pain that you've inflicted on yourself and take accountability for the decisions that you've made. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory. He said, you want me to tell you about a failure in the Bible? I had Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had walked with Jesus. Even those who walk with Jesus make mistakes. Here, listen to Peter's story. He said, Jesus had even healed Peter's mother-in-law. Deny him, but he still denied Jesus three times. Hallelujah. And then when, um, hallelujah, let me slow down, God. Okay, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let me, let me slow down. Peter knew that Jesus was going to be crucified and had promised Jesus that he would never forsake him. But as the most crucial time in history, Peter's fear drove him to fail, the one he called his friend. Hallelujah. How many of us are harboring guilt for forsaking a friend or ourselves in the God? Hey, hey. Woo, release right now. Victory. That's why God is saying victory right there. Hey, ta -da -da -basa. Release yourself. Mm. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus warned Peter to stay awake and pray because the spirit might be willing, but the flesh is weak. Come on, sometimes we get so full of zeal. Hallelujah. That we miss God. And then when we realize that we miss God, we're so upset. Hallelujah. We can't forgive ourselves because we, ah, we fail and we fall. But God said, get back up again. Hallelujah. He said, Peter fell asleep. And by the time the soldiers had come to arrest Jesus, it was too late to pray. It was too late to find strength to endure. But Peter learned his lesson about being watchful. Peter assumed that he was strong enough. He assumed, hallelujah. He was strong enough to withstand any temptation as he stood with Jesus. When we get zeal and we come into Christ, we think we can withstand anything, the earthquakes. But sometimes we fall short. But he failed to realize that you can let our emotions overpower you even when we have set our goals to be strong in the Lord. 
Hallelujah. But his enemy had targeted Peter because who's your enemy? The devil who comes around to sit. He's as a roaring, as a roaring lion seeking who he shall devour. Hallelujah. He's a great enemy and he's always on the prowl. He's always watching. He's always underestimating you. He's always patiently waiting for you. Hallelujah. But God said, Hallelujah. Whoo, Holy Ghost. Peter came to himself when he heard the cock crow three times, the rooster crow three times, and he knew that he had failed God. Some of us are in the season where we're hearing the cock crowing in our life. Have you heard it? Mm. Whoo, Jesus. Are you hearing the cock crowing in your life? If so, this is your time for change. It's not a bad thing. But let me tell you what's getting ready to happen. He said Simon first. He was just a common name. He was just a man fallible. But after he heard the cock crow and he realized that he had denied Jesus, Peter said he realized his enemy was seeking him to devour. But God is so good. God, hallelujah. Jesus knows all about you. And he said in Luke 22, 31 through 32 in the Message Bible, and I want to read it because it's very important that you don't miss out what God said. He called him by name. Don't think for one second. He said, Simon, stay on your toes. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you from me. He's talking to all the disciples. Like chafe from wheat. But he called Simon, who would become Peter. Simon, I've prayed for you in particular that you not give in or give out. When you have come through the time of testing, turn to your companions companions, and give them strength to restart afresh. Hallelujah. I say that today. The word is this, that even though you fail, Even though you feel you fail God, hallelujah, he has your name on his mind because you are the key to delivering a whole lot of people. So don't give up. That's why it's so important that when God calls you that you don't turn your ear away and to stay prayed up. Don't be so cocky and in your zeal that you miss God. Be watchful and pray. So that you don't miss God. Hallelujah. But God said even if you do. He said he is praying that the devil. Hallelujah. Don't sift you like what. He prays for you. Hallelujah. He hears you. Hallelujah. That's why I was telling uh, Minister Santiago. When he preached. He prophesied to you last week. You said it during. Uh. When we were on our meeting, that this was the last time for Adonis. And look what God did. God is good. He hears you. When we don't think, when we're just talking, just like a common joke, and we're saying things out of our mouth, God is still hearing us. So be very careful what you say. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus could have protected Peter from it. But Jesus had a higher goal. He needed to arm Peter in the fight to strengthen the other disciples. See, this is not about you. This is about somebody else getting strength. Hallelujah. Peter was equipped and able to rise up as a leader, teaching and training others to follow Jesus. He was a special speaker on the day of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit came out and poured on 120 people in the upper room. And he also spoke to thousands at the Passover. You don't know what God is preparing you for. So you better go through the process. Stay in the fight. Don't give up. God is able to do what he said he can do. Victory is mine. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I believe that I'm more than a conqueror. I am all that God said. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Even if you don't believe it, God knows it's true. You better stay in the fight. Hallelujah. Because God knows what he called you to be. Hallelujah. And where you don't see it, you got the strength to deliver nations. 
with the voice of triumph. People don't understand why I shout, but I know I got victory when you've been through what I've been through. I tell you about shit. Come on now. Glory to God. He's able. Hallelujah. I'm done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay to give him a praise. Go ahead. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Because he's doing something, Oasis. Hallelujah. And we bless him. We bless him. Woo! We give you praise, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Break the mold was what he gave me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Let God have his way in our lives. He knows what we need. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. The Saturday before Yom Kippur, that's the day of atonement, the day of repentance. Hallelujah. That's a Jewish holiday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord laid something very specific in my heart when I was in my kitchen. I know exactly where I was standing. I was standing by the kitchen island. And the Lord said, deal with this. Search your heart and deal with this. Who am I to argue with Holy Ghost, right? He knows, and he knows me better than I know myself. And I immediately surrendered to that thing. I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, because I'm in a place where I want to please God, and I don't want to wrestle with God no more over funky stuff, things that don't matter. Do you hear me? Things that don't produce fruit. God wants to see fruit. The people out there need to see fruit. We can't be compared to the world. So I said, yes, Lord. I was in his presence Tuesday after Yom Kippur. I'm on the phone with my daughter. We're just interceding. Holy Ghost is speaking through um, our time of intercession. And I just kept hearing Holy Ghost say, we were praying for our heart and the condition of our heart. And, and I just heard, break the mold, break the mold. I, he said, break the mold. And I said, Alexi, I hear spirit of the Lord saying, break the mold. Let him break the mold. Hallelujah, God. Go ahead and do what you have to do, Holy Ghost, in our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that Pastor Spence, I believe it was towards the end of the summer, where he said, as we reach the end of the year, he said, Search your heart. Search yourself. Not your neighbor, but yourself, me. And that's exactly what this is about. Break the mold means search me, God. You see, we're coming up towards the end of the year, and we're, listen, we're moving. I'm here to tell you Oasis is moving. God is doing something here at the Oasis. We're moving. This is a new Oasis. I want you to know that. Hallelujah. 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 So let's deal with some things. Let's put it on the wheel. Okay? Jeremiah 18. I'm reading this from the message. God told Jeremiah, get up on your feet. Go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what to say. So I went to the potter's house, and sure enough, the potter was there, working away at his wheel. Whenever the pot the potter was working on turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you are working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. Okay, take five seconds. And I want you to say, God, I thank you for using the same clay. Isn't God, oh, come on, come on. He uses the same clay. Some of you know how busted you are, right? I don't need to tell you. We know ourselves. I know me. I know what causes me to get an attitude. That God is telling me, check yourself because I'm taking you somewhere. And where I'm taking you, I need to deal with that right there. 
right? You know you better than yourself. So he uses the same clay. And you see this pot? This pot has been with me around the world. It has some defects because we've moved. And it hasn't been treated nicely during moving. Okay? And I purchased this pot for the purpose of putting fake flowers, real flowers. But guess what? I can't put real flowers in here anymore because it's been cracked. And you can't see it. You probably can't see the defects. Right? So I glued it because I said, I'm not throwing it away. It just reminds me of the woman at the well. Okay, one of my favorite stories. You know, she went to the well to get some water. So this just reminded me of that, okay? The woman at the well, uh, you can take that home with you too. Um, Awesome story, John chapter 4. So if I put water in this, it's going to leak. So guess what that means? It's not working to its fullest potential. This pot has more potential. So much so that I even thought, oh, maybe I could put some epoxy on it, right? And it'll seal it. I don't know. Maybe. But you have more potential. Okay? Anyway, we know that clay comes from where? The soil. And that's where we were created from. And I'm here to tell you that the best place you can put your life is in the potter's hands. Because he's gentle. He knows how to work with you. I'd rather him work with me than have my pastor say, come here. Come here, Minister Santiago. We got to have a talk. I'd rather Holy Ghost do that. Right? Or, the ha- or, 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 or have someone else tell me, man, you, you're really ugly inside. Right? So listen, I'm going to hurry up. Praise the Lord. In the King James Version, the word when the clay is marred, right? What that means in the Hebrew translation, it means it's corrupted. It means it has imperfections. It has a disfigurement. Now, if you look at this closely, it has some disfigurement. But it's still very useful. I could still use it. And I did. I put fake flowers, like I said. Okay? So those disfigurements, those imperfections, God sees them. And that's the wonderful thing about God, that we can be transparent because he sees our nakedness. He knows what you struggle with. He knows that, you know what, I have a hard time forgiving people. You know what, God, I have a hard time. I'm carrying the shame, and I just don't know how to get free because the things that I did when I was back in the world, I just don't know how to overcome that. Can you help me? Can you remove those imperfections? I'm here to tell you God is more than willing when you're willing to put your life on the wheel and say, break the mold. Just allow God to have his way in your life. Amen. Thank you, sir. When the praises go up, they say the blessings, thank you, sir, come down. That's real good. You know where they got that out of? Psalm 67. That's what that is based off. That's one of we like to call our um, Christian colloquialisms. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. But can I help you with that scripture this morning? Pastor, you did my job. You really did my job. You're going to make this so easy for me. In Psalm 67, it starts out with, God be merciful. In other words, God be compassionate unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. I love that the word Selah in the Passion Translation says, pause in his presence. Then it goes on, that thy way may be known upon the earth, that thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Pause in his presence. 
Let the people praise thee, O oh God. Let all, 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 not some, all the people praise thee. Then, T-H-E-N, it's an adverb, I'm coming back to that. Shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear or reverence our God. In verse 1, he said to be merciful. God has the power to punish us. He chooses not to. Hallelujah. He said, not only did you, because you know what I, I thought about this, and I said, who actually wrote this psalm? Well, they don't know. Some authorities will say, and Bible scholars said, it looks like it's along the same line as the way David wrote. Some would say David wrote it, but they don't know. I believe they don't know because God put you in there. He had you in mind. Let the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. I don't know about you, but when I walked into the oasis this morning, I apologized for my lateness because God was still saying some things to me as I was trying to leave out. And one thing he got me to do, it kept coming to me when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Then, the word then, that adverb has a very specific meaning. It means at that time. So let me read it to you again. Three, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and rejoice. I'm going to skip that. Five, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then, at that time, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. At that time. The earth shall yield her increase, and God, even our own God, will bless you. You know what? I was going and trying to leave out this morning, and the Holy Spirit said, no, go look. Go back into your jewelry. I want you to show the people. God said, he has treasures in the earth. What kind of treasures does God got? Let the people praise you, God. Let all the people praise you. Then, at that time... God showed me my necklace. When you look at this necklace, you don't find this when you go in the jewelry store because it's called a statement piece. Now, the statement piece, they, they keep them back there. Now, I can go look at diamonds and diamonds and all of that, but when you want a statement piece, I wanted something special. So the guy said, well, I'll be back. He comes back, and he sets this necklace on a on the table with all the lights and stuff, and it was blinging up a storm. And then they had the audacity to sit it on something black. And I asked him, well, why do y'all put everything on that black velvet? He said, so it brings out his excellence. <laughs> and then he reminded me, he said, these are stones that are precious stones and semi-precious. Well, they're only four stones that are precious. They're diamonds. Diamonds is the hardest obstacle in the world. Nothing is harder than a diamond. A diamond can cut through metal. Diamonds can cut through steel. You've never gone to the store and saw a steel blade? The reason is steel because it's diamond sharp. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then at that time shall the earth yield or increase. We keep saying the praises go up, the blessings come down. I hear to tell you this morning, the blessings are already in the earth. How do I know? Yeah. Then at that time when all the people praise me, he said at that time the earth yields its increase. This is the increase of the earth. Diamonds come from the earth. Sapphires come from the earth. Amethysts come from the earth. Citrine comes from the earth. Rubies come from the earth. All of these jewels come from the earth. By themselves, they're wonderful. All together, they're spectacular. God said, by yourself, you're wonderful. All together, let the people praise me. Let all the people praise me. Healing is relief. It's in the earth. Your needs, it's in the earth. What you have need of from God is in the earth. Salvation for your children is in the earth. He said up here, he said, if the, all the earth will rejoice, all nations in four, all nations will be glad and sing for joy. Rejoice, I say. And again, I say rejoice. Why? Because he said this deals with the government in verse 4. Don't be scared about no government shut down. The government sits on its shoulder. Isaiah 9, 6 is not a Christian uh, just for Christmas. It's for now at this time. 
He said the government sits on his shoulder. The last time I saw when something sits on your shoulder, you get the balance if it falls off or not. God gets to say whether it shuts down or not. And even if it shuts down, the earth shall yield its increase. Let the people praise him. All the people praise him. Time out, Oasis, for coming to church and have one praise on the floor. It's not a spectatorship. It's a partnership. It's time to get up when one praise is on the floor. Get on there and join them. I don't care if you can't do anything but the bunny hop, hop, hop. Praise is on the floor. We've got to join one another. He said, let the nation sing and let them rejoice. They're going to rejoice and sing because the children of God are giving him the glory. They're giving him the praise. They're giving him the honor. They're giving him what's due. It's time to give God what's due. Stop giving God what's left and give God what's right. We want God to do everything for us. And we think we got a nine to five God. The devil is a lie. He works overtime. God works 24-7. He doesn't sleep nor slumber. Whatever you need from God, he's got it. I'm going to do like the songwriter say. Give me a minute. Let me, let me brag on my God. My God is a healer. My God is a keeper. My God is a looker. My God is a finder. My God is a peacemaker. He is the joy. He is the lamb. He is the love. He is everything we have need of. There's nothing God can't do. His word, he said. Just listen and receive my word. His word is infallible. That means it can never be proven wrong. It's immutable. That means they can't change it. I don't care what the world tells you. If they say yes, God says, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm going to put a little something in it. God said, let the people praise me. Stop coming to church on Sunday and just let one person praise God. God said, when the whole congregation praised me, then at that time, Oasis is at that time. It's that time to start getting up and giving God some praise. I don't know why you're in your chair. He's been too good. You ought to be on your feet. You ought to be jumping. You ought to be thanking. You ought to be yelling. You ought to be screaming. You ought to be saying, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God, I bless you. If you don't do it, it won't get done. I don't care. I know God's got my back. I know he's got my back. They got it up against the wall. I can't pay my rent. I can't think. I've been molested. I've been hurt. I've been thrown down, cast down in despair. But God said, simply send him up a praise. It's your blessings are in the earth. Stop looking for him to drop down from heaven. Last time I saw something drop down, it was a plane. It wasn't a good thing. The blessings are in the earth. He said he's given us these gifts in earthen vessels. Some are silver and some are gold in the house of God. But he said that some are vessels of honor and some are vessels of dishonor. God can use a crack pot. He used you. He used me. We all got leaks in our house. But the last thing I want to say to you is he said it again. It's at that time when the people praise me, when all the people praise me. I still don't hear praise on the floor. Let the people praise me. Let all the people praise him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Magnify him. See him bigger than all your situations, all your problems. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the honor as I take my seat. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. To God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Right there. With no music, give God praise. Come on. With no music. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of our worship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has set your feet on a path to be here this morning. And the purpose of your feet being here is to bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Praise is comely, says the word of God. It's comely. That means that it's, that means that it's in style. 
That means that the devil goes out of style. The praise is something that you ought to be comfortable with. You can wear, guess what? Bell bottoms went out of style, and so did some shirts and slacks and, and, and wide collar shirts, but praise never goes out of style. Amen? Hallelujah. Never goes out of style. Hallelujah. 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 This morning while we were, I'm, I'm going to get to my get to my my scripture and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to give you what God said. But while we were worshiping this morning, um, when I walked up to the church this morning, I saw that the doors were open. And of course, you could hear us all up and down the sidewalk, which I thought was cool. You know, I said, yeah, they down there at the other end. People get curious and come down and look in the church. But while we were praising God and while we were worshiping this morning, when I came inside and while we were moving, the Holy Spirit gave me a word and he said that while we were worshiping, he said the God of the open door and the open window was present this morning. He said the God of the open door and the open window was present. Now, I understand what doors do. Doors provide an exit and an entry to buildings and facilities. But windows, I said I'm not too sure about. I know they serve a purpose, so I went to Google, you know, the, 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 the chapter of Google, uh, whatever I typed in, second chapter of Google, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, I put it in and I read what a window serves the purpose of. A window has three purposes. One, it's for light. Two, believe it or not, it's for sound. And three, it's actually for wind and for atmospheric changes. In other words, it's also for light. So when God opens up a window, understand that he is, when he opens up a window, he is coming in to change the atmosphere. Somebody catch that. He is coming in to change the atmosphere. So not only is he opening doors for entry and exit, but he's coming to change the atmosphere oasis. So I want you to be at a place of preparation that you understand that the atmosphere, the barometric pressure is getting ready to change in your life as a believer, all because you worship today, all because you praise today. Pastor said it earlier. He said, you don't know what God is doing behind the scenes while you're worshiping. You don't know what situation he's turning around while you're worshiping, while you're praising. Guess what? That bill that was sitting on the table, God may have, may have moved to ACH that ended up in your account, and now you can pay the bill. Maybe there's something going on in your physical body that you felt that was not going to change, but now all of a sudden it's changed. You couldn't do it. You were in pain. You were in excess pain, and now God is doing something in your life. Maybe and this is for somebody. Maybe it was for somebody's children. Maybe you're worried about them. Maybe you're understanding that you know what? They're not doing what you prayed they would be doing. But God says, I'm reversing the course in their life, and they're going to end up back in the house of God. Hallelujah. That one was for free. That was from the Holy Ghost this morning. And I want you to understand that when God speaks, that means that he's got to validate his word. So you ought to look for the atmospheric changes in your life. You ought to look for things to start changing. Amen. My message this morning is called Stay the Course. Stay the Course. Last week when um, Pastor Kimani came in, he said, don't move. God woke me up this morning around 5 a.m. He woke me up so harshly that I jumped up and he said, stay the course. I jumped up so hard I woke the dog up and he looked up at me and I, and I sat up and I said, you can go back to sleep. I'm good. I was, uh, he said, stay the course. And he took me to Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 and I'm going to read it just for the sake of nine, but for the sake of time. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I want to focus on the word weary because there are many of us, and it's not about the time of year, not the time, it's not because it's getting ready to be November and move into December and move into another holiday, but there are some people right now that are saying to themselves, I've been living this life long enough that I've been living a good life as a Christian long enough, and I just want to know, is there more to life than this? Is there more to life than just paying bills and coming to church and paying bills and watching children and, and getting up and taking pills for my sickness and, and going to work and coming home and cooking dinner? I had that conversation with my wife the other day because I was at a place, Pastor, where I kind of felt stuck. 
You know, has anybody ever been there where you kind of just felt stuck where life just starts to become mundane? I get up, I go do this, I go to the gym, I come back, I sit down, I come back, got to pick the kids up, got to set the dog out, got to put this out, did I put anything there? Has anybody else ever been there? But I know I've been there to where you just start feeling like, is there more? God, there's got to be more to life than just this regimented routine every day. I got to get up and go do this, and I got to make this call and everything else. And I start to feel like life, is starting to fleet me. But God said to send this message this morning that your weariness has not gone unnoticed, that he is sending renewed strength, that he does not want you to faint for such a time as this. And, you know, I understood this. I, I was watching a show. It's actually an old show called The Love Boat. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling my age. I mean, Love Boat, Isaac, and, 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 and who was it? Captain Steubing and all them people. And so... I, I was watching it one day, and, and, and they were on a course to one of their, you know, Puerto Vallarta. And they always went to the same place. They never went nowhere new. Always the same place. But anyway, they were going, and they encountered a storm. And so I forget the ship's mate came up, and they were talking about it. It's one of those special episodes. But anyway, and, 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 and I know those that have been in the Navy understand that because they've had to chart a course. There are times when you can't move from the place that you want to move to on the course. And Captain Steubing said, we can't go back. He said, we can't. He said, we've got to stay here in the place that I'm in, because if I do anything otherwise, I put the lives of all of the people on the ship in jeopardy. There are people that are you are holding literal lives and souls in your hands if you move to the left or to the right. There is salvation on your house that if you give up and you quit right now, salvation may be delayed coming to your family. There's healing that is waiting to come to your family that if you take one move to the left or to the right or if you decide to go backwards, God said it is not going to come at the appointed time. So I am here this morning morning to declare and decree unto you stay the course you know what if you've ever sat in traffic and God knows I hate traffic but you know what there's some times when I've had to sit there and say I guess it's better that I sit here than that I try to find a side street or try to go somewhere else because you know what I've come to find is that if you sit there for a little while guess what eventually it opens up and you know what I still get there on time despite the fact that I had to sit there a little longer so this morning my word of encouragement to you is to stay the course don't get off don't look for an exit don't look for a side street don't look for a shortcut stay the course because God is in the staying business and I know that you're weary I know that you're tired. I know that you're overwhelmed. I know that you're tired of taking the pills. I know that you're tired of going to that job every day. I know that the marriage may not be going right. I know that the children are going crazy and you're thinking that my prayers ain't working, but God said stay the course and watch the salvation of the Lord visit your home. Hallelujah. Is there an end to this? Is there an end to this? I'm, a, I'm asking a question that many of us, is there an end to this? Is this the end, me taking all these pills? Is this the end to this, my son being incarcerated? Is this an end to this, my daughter done had her third or fourth baby by four different men? Is there an end to this? Is there an end to this? Yes, there is. He said in the, in the last part of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, he said, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, you don't have time to faint. You don't have time to get exasperated, overwhelmed, run amok, or, or get full of your emotions. There are times when you just got to stand, and you got to stand with all that you got and stand with your feet. Uh, you got to be shot in the whole armor of God. You got to stand and having done all to stand, stand with your loins girt about in truth. Stand with the gospel of peace. Stand with that shield of faith. Stand with the sword of the spirit. You just going to have to stand, baby. It's not going to go away by running away. It's not going to go away by running away. I'm going to end with this. How many of you all faced a bully in your life? And I ain't talking about as an adult. I'm talking about as a kid. You know, we all had a bully. Maybe you were the bully. I don't know. But we all had a bully. 
And you know what? I remember I had a bully. I had a bully. I had a bully. His name was Guy. Believe it, a black guy with the name Guy. Never do that. But I remember this guy used to, every day I would come, and a guy, yeah, that's funny. I said, yeah, this guy, he would wait on me at school, and I would come in. I was in second grade, and I had my little backpack, my lunchbox, and I would come into school, and, and somehow, some way, he would find me, Pastor, and he would find me in the hallway, and he would start to tease me, and him and some other boys, and they would push on me, and, you know, but I would make my way into class because I was quiet, and I didn't want to get in trouble, and, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to do nothing that would cause uh, embarrassment or getting in trouble with my parents, but one day, Pastor, you know what, sometimes you just get fed up. You just get fed up because you like this. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them going in my lunchbox. I'm sick of them pushing on me. I'm sick of this. I'm tired of telling my daddy and my mom about it, and they telling me, "Look, just tell the teacher." Because you know what? After a while, the teacher ain't doing that. Look, I'm gonna take this in my own hands and let the chips fall where they may. So one day, uh, Minister Santiago, I walked into the school. And when I walked in, guess what? I couldn't duck him. I couldn't go down the other hallway. I couldn't go this way. It was me and him in the hallway. And I had my lunchbox in this hand, and I had my other hand free. And Pastor, I started balling up my fist. And for those of you that know, you know what? I was one of those kids that I would cry when I started getting real mad. Tia and I would start shaking. I was one of them type because I was like something was taking me over. But I was like, I'm a, I was like, I'm going to knock this joker upside his head with this lunchbox today if he mess with me. And I got down the middle of the hallway and he came walking up to me and he was smiling and before he could get a word out of his mouth pastor I took the lunch box and I swung it and I hit him in his head and the teacher came running in the hallway and she said oh my god oh my god what happened and I said miss miss Mathis that was her name I said miss Mathis I got tired I said, I got tired. I said, but you know what? I had to stay the course. I couldn't go to another elementary school. I couldn't ask my parents to put me nowhere else. So what I'm saying to you is no matter what the bully is, no matter what the opposition is, stay the course. Hallelujah. Come on and worship God this morning. I'm done. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise God. Whew. Wow. Y'all minister today, for real. Lord, have mercy. You know, I don't know. Uh, can I get some, some quiet music? Um, I'm really almost like kind of speechless. Uh, I don't know exactly. I said this when I sent the, the order of service yesterday to the ministers, uh, elders and, and ministers, everyone, um, Brother uh, uh, Michael. <clears throat> I said this in the email. I said, can I testify? And I said, God is, God is good. I think that's what I said. God is good. To the oasis, that's what I said. Um, I'm telling you, I don't know exactly what God is doing. All I know is that God is doing something. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, I'm reminded of the saying that God, whatever you're doing, um, in this season, don't don't do it without. Don't do it without me. Something is happening, Oasis. Um, and even though I don't know, can't pinpoint it. Um, I know that God is doing something, and that God has us on His mind. I was in a meeting yesterday. My God, I was in a meeting yesterday with uh, uh, with the, the county commissioners. Um, I almost can't. Don't worry about that. Okay, forget about what I'm about to say. Okay, because I can't. Now I, I can't tell you because there's protocol. I got to make sure I let the executive leaders know, and then I got to let everybody else know and let it go down. To even so. You know, even the pastor knows protocol. But I'm telling you, 
uh, Elder Foreman, Elder Sullivan, Brother Mike. I got something to share with y'all that's that gives me every reason that God really has us on his mind. We are, I left the meeting yesterday saying that we are the oasis. We are the sought out ones. I'm telling you. We are the sought out ones. And when you think that nothing when you think that nobody cares about us and nobody knows anything about us, I'm telling you, we are the sought out ones. And uh, like I said, I don't know. I don't know, really, for real. I don't know what he's doing, but he sure enough got us on his mind. He, if this is like the open door, I wish, I wish I can call an executive meeting right now. And, let, and share with you, I, but I guess this is a test. This is a test on my part. Can I keep my mouth shut until <laughs> until, until the meeting, until the, the, until it's time? Exactly. But my God, it's just this is just crazy. I can't wait until to see what where we are going to be about this time next year. That's all I can say. Uh, I, I just can't. I just can't. All right. Well, we want to welcome all of our first-time visitors <laughs> to, to the Oasis. Um, let's see if we can do this and have y'all out by by um, twelve o'clock. Um, man, this is so good. I wish I could talk. I wonder if I can, Brother Mike, if he can. I can't, I can't, I got to call Brother Mike and the two elders um, and just let them know what happened yesterday as it relates to his ministry. Um, but man, this is so good. Thank y'all uh, to the preachers. Thank y'all for, for hearing from God and, and obeying God because on top of the news that I got yesterday um, and then y'all ministering, it really, really kind of messed me up a little bit. Um, I couldn't say anything when Elder Aaron got up. I couldn't say too much um, because y'all done already. I just, you know, I think I got to go home and just put the puzzles together, try to put them together. I'm like, okay, God, what are you really, what, what are you really doing? It's just crazy. All right. So I guess I got y'all really kind of curious, huh? All right, cool. Just know that God has his hands on us. And I praise the Lord for it. Um, just Cassandra, can we, today is, is uh, uh, I'm about to say the color purple Sunday. Uh, pink. Well, we're observing the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't know if you've noticed that I've been, you know, representing uh, those who've gone through breast cancer breast cancer. I've worn pink all week long. I mean, all month long. And uh, I, I want to s salute those individuals who who uh, have gone through breast cancer. Um, some of them have didn't make it through it. And then some of you have made it through. And I can understand your praise and you understand your worship this morning. Um, so at this time, I'm going to get out of the way. There's a presentation. And, uh, and then we're going to give the announcements. We're going to get out of here. All right. Greetings, everyone. My name is Tamaria Wilcox. I'm a board-certified family nurse practitioner and founder of NP Family Practice. Greetings, everyone. My name is Tamaria Wilcox. I'm a board-certified family nurse practitioner and founder of NP Family Practice. To okay, we'll let them get get do what they need to do, and then we'll um, I'll go ahead and give the an announcements and receive the offering and give the announcements. Um, amen. 
Let's, can we receive that uh, offering for this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All righty. Um, we've, uh, we've heard from, from Minister Santiago um, about locating your heart. And I think that it's so important and vital um, that we get to a place where we locate our heart. Um, I really counted a privilege to be able to receive the offering this morning because sometimes when they, uh, others are receiving the offering, I'm like, really, can I, can I really share something? <laughs> uh, and I believe this is the word of the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, um, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, and I believe that God wants us this morning as we receive the offering, uh, tithes and offering, uh, that we really locate our hearts as it relates to money. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And we're talking about the last days. And y'all know in the King James it says, in the last days perilous times will come. Um, and when I read the scripture, it's almost like we are in the last days. Let me go ahead and read it from the easy read version. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 1. Remember this, there are some terrible times coming in the last days. This is what the scripture says. Now, how many of y'all realize that, you, you know, you can cast out a devil, but you can't cast out prophecy? All right. Prophecy is prophecy, especially when it comes from the Lord. There, there are some terrible things or terrible times coming in the last days. People will love only themselves and money. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's talking about the last days. People will love only themselves and money. They will be proud and boast about themselves. They will abuse others with insults. They will not obey their parents. When I read this scripture here, I'm like, man, uh, this is like for real. Parents, don't, don't get disheartened when your kids don't tell you, don't do what you tell them to do. We get, we get getting mad and upset and you're just rebellious or you're just uh, this or you're just uh, that. The Bible says in the last days, <laughs> they will not obey their parents. They will be ungrateful. And against all that is pleasing to God, they will have no love for others and will refuse to forgive anybody. They will lack, they, excuse me, they will talk about others to hurt them and will have no self-control. Are, are we not living in the last days when we look at this scripture here? <laughs> and we're just surprised. Oh, I'm just surprised. No, the last days. They will be cruel and hate what is good. People will turn against their friends. They will do foolish things without thinking and will be so proud of themselves. <laughs> Instead of loving God, they will love pleasure. Verse number five says, they will go on pretending to be devoted to God, but they will refuse to let that devotion change the way they live. Whoa, 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 let me read that again. I, let me read that real slow. They will go on pretending to be devoted to God, but they will refuse to let that devotion change the way they live. If that ain't hypocrisy, I don't know why. It's having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He goes on and he closes with verse number five. He says, stay away from these people. A sign of the last days. Verse number two. People will love themselves and love money.
I don't want to go deep into this. Uh, no, I, I don't think I can. I, I'll hit it and then I'll quit it. The United States, uh, the United States need to be very careful because everything that we do is money driven. I went to London, um, London last year. No, this year, early part of this year. And in London, I found out. that in the United States, everything that we do costs us something because they love money. And the Bible says the love of money is the root. It didn't say money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You wonder what, why is it that things are happening the way they're happening in the United States? The United States needs to locate itself as it relates to money. All right, let me make it, bring it home, okay. You need to relate, you need to locate your heart when it comes to money. Because when you look at the scriptures, Money is a competition for the heart, or is in competition for the heart. Money wants your heart. It wants your heart, and it wants it really bad. Everything that God does, he wants to know, do you trust him? And unfortunately, we trust money more than we trust God. The greatest fear, and you've heard me say this before, the greatest fear of the devil, the devil has on any of us, is that do we trust God more than we trust anything else? All God wants and all God requires of us is do we trust him? Or do we put value in our own bank account, what's in our pocket? This morning, I want you all to locate your heart. Do you trust God or do you trust money? Money is like a hammer. The money, money can, a hammer can hurt you and, and a hammer can help you. Money can hurt you, and money can also help you. I find it very interesting that, uh, and I looked at this this morning, that 2,350 2, times the Bible at, talks about money. But then when we come to church, we don't want to talk about it. One of the reasons why we don't want to talk about it because our trust is in our money and not in God. Here, here are a, a few evidence whether you have a problem with money. Number one, you let a paycheck direct your decisions rather than God. Number two, money makes you anxious and fearful. Because it makes you fearful, then you don't trust in God. <laughs> Number three, when you, are, when you are assertive in, excuse me, 
when you when you when your mind and I can't can't see what I wrote. I wrote something because I wrote it real fast, but I'm going to put it in other words. When you are consumed with building wealth, I just want to build wealth. I just want to build wealth. But what about God? Do you still you trust? Are you trusting God, or are you trying to build wealth? Number four. All right, I'm about to walk the dog. He about to he about to poop on some of y'all. You cheated, lied, and stolen to get wealth. This is when you know your heart ain't right towards number five. You feel stingy. <laughs> Last thing is this. You don't give offerings. Oh, there we go. There is that preacher. God bless you, Sister Rita. There is that preacher. That's all the preachers want is your money. That's what they say. But can I remind you of, 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 of something that happened in the Bible? It was offering time in church. And uh, this is in Matthew chapter number 12. I mean, excuse me, Mark chapter number 12. You can check it out on your own. They were given, they were, it was offering time in, in church. So Jesus decided to, um, who's going to, uh, come here, come here, uh, Isaiah. They were given offerings in church. And while they were given offerings in church, Jesus decided to come and see how much people were given. like, let me see how much people are really giving in the offering. It's in your Bible. I, it's Mark chapter number 12, I think, verses uh, uh, 41 through, through 44. The big shot people, they were coming and just, I mean, people who had a lot of riches, they were just coming and, and putting in the, in the in the basket. Then came a little lady. All she had was what they call a widow's might. She didn't have, oh, excuse me, that's another scripture. Do you, oh, I thought you were pulling it up. All right, let me, let me read it, make sure. Pastor, I read it and the pastor said a widow's might. A widow's might. Okay, we can't have, can't have sound problems now. We're talking about money. <laughs> uh, Mark chapter, this at 12, I think pences, I think that's the word that the scripture uses. What is it? Okay. Okay, here we go. In Mark chapter 2, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Jesus sat near the temple, uh, near the temple, I'm reading it from the uh, easy read version. You want me to read it from the King James because you don't believe one of the others, I'll go ahead and read it from that. But Jesus sat near the temple collection box and watched as, as people put money into it. Many rich people put a lot of money. Then a, a, a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth less than a penny. Verse 43, Jesus called his followers to him and said, okay, it's time to give a lesson. This poor widow put in only two small coins, but the truth is, she gave more than all those rich people. They had plenty, and they gave only what they did not need. This woman is very poor, but she gave all she had. It was money she needed to live on. Beloved, what I'm saying is this. You should never come before the Lord. And I think there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says you should never come before the Lord empty-handed. Find something. If, if you don't have a lot, find something to give because God is trying to locate your heart. And, and, and even though Jesus, back in the day, looked to see how much people were putting in, I believe this, that Jesus today is checking to see how much you're putting in.
Where's your heart? That's all that matters. Where is your heart? And I believe this. We are living in the last days. Rather than trusting God, people are trusting money. And take away all the other stuff, you better have Jesus. With things that I, that I, that I hear that, that's happening, you better have Jesus. You got to make sure you, you, you better make sure you have Jesus. Make sure you trust him because as my Aunt Doris used to sing years ago, be sure, great aunt, be very sure your anchor hold and grip the solid rock. You got to make sure that you're trusting Jesus. Start now. Whatever you do, start trusting him now while you have a chance because the day is going to come that your back is up, going to be up against the wall. And then we're going to find out who really is trusting him. Amen. Locate your heart, y'all. All right. The brothers are going to come. And uh, we're going to receive our morning offering. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm done. I'll just tell you. I tell y'all when I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm ready. I'm ready to go eat. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, if you need an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand. I'm, my apologies. I didn't follow. Oh, y'all already got it? Y'all okay? Get, already good? Good to always see you, Sister Lexi. Your prayer ought to be, God, whatever you're doing at the Oasis, don't do it without me and my husband and my family. <laughs> Praise God. You, know, you got to ask yourself, I mean, really, do you have more faith in God than you have in your money? All right, I'm going to leave that alone. We done had a good service today. The preacher's ministry, and I'm receiving. Now you're talking about money. Then drop the, drop the spirit. Let's see. That's a sign that you haven't been free for money. Because, because those of you who've been trusting, trusting God more than your money, you should have been jumping and shouting. And, hey, hallelujah. Tell it, pastor. And in and, uh, and the voice of, of Minister Tony, very high-pitched voice. Uh, all right, let's stand. We can give the, I'll give the announcement. We've got some important things to share with you. And uh, then we're going to be out of here. Father, it's our prayer this morning or this afternoon. Our prayer this, this afternoon is three, three words. Break the mold. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Follow the leading of the ushers. Those of you who are online, the ways of giving are, are, are present. You can go ahead and do that. Greetings, everyone. My name is Tamaria Wilcox. I'm a board-certified family nurse practitioner and founder of NP Family Practice. Today, I will discuss a critical topic, and that is breast cancer awareness. Did you know that breast cancer is one of the most prevalent forms of cancer affecting women? Breast cancer is one of the most 
common cancers on women and the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in women. Breast cancer kills over 40,000 women in the United States each year and is the most common cancer in the United States. Zero zero, Bay Woods Drive in Lexington Park. If you can assist with the outreach, please see Sister Felicia immediately after church. Now, let me pause and just say this. Uh, this is this is what I'm about to say is very important. It's it's vital. I. You got something, Sister Felicia? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, all right. Oasis. Doors have opened for us. Doors for ministry have just like popped out of nowhere. We have two areas that we're going to be challenged with that we have to make an impact. Um, one of them is, is the uh, towns at, at Pax River. And then the other place is Southampton. Now, those of you that said Southampton, what has Southampton has to do with this? When we leave, y'all know that Linda has already located a place, okay? Um, she's leaving at the, end of the, at the end of the year. We are also leaving at the end of the year. So this place is going to be like, like vacant, for real. When we leave here, we're going to be at Southampton at the Carver Recreation Center. Okay? Uh, did I tell y'all? I already told y'all this, right? Oh, I'm thinking I'm telling y'all telling this for the first time. What? All right. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay. I'm telling y'all this for the... I thought I told y'all this. But anyway... Um, we're going to be down in the Southampton area. How dare we to be right there in the Southampton at the Carver Recreation Center and not impact that area? All right. We'll probably be there for about six, about probably about six months, starting in January. That area is ministry territory. We have to do something. By the time we leave there around June, July time period, we should have made an impact. When we leave it, that area, we should have said, they should be saying, where is that church? It's ministry outreach territory. Okay. Not only is that Southampton area, also the uh, towns at Pax River, just down the street from there. They're asking for us. These are two communities who are asking for the oasis. Now, to our elders and ministers, this is really a time for you to put your piece of paper, your license to practice. I realized that I'm sitting there, you know, this past week, I was in uh, Toledo, Ohio, covering for a conference uh, for an organization. And I'm like, Lord, 
I want to take it slow. I want to make sure we have a plan. Because one of the things I don't want to do is make a decision real quick and then all of a sudden back up. Y'all already know me. I don't like to be making mistakes. I'll make a decision real quick and then all of a sudden say, oh, we can't do it now. That's, that's just not, that's not me. I believe this. I believe if I'm, we're going to commit to something, we're going to commit it, and then we're going to follow through. Those of you who say God has called you to ministry, I ain't giving you no paper. I ain't giving you no license until you prove to me that you're in ministry out there first before you try to get up here and like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be preaching just like, just like Elder Foreman. I'm going to be preaching. Like, no, 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 no. Fool me once. Oh, uh-uh. No. We're going to, we, we, there's, there's a community. So I'm going to be forming, putting together a group of individuals. If you are interested, and if you're committed, this will only, what do you call your business? Those of you in the business field, what do you call those small gatherings, meetings, groups that only meet like just temporary? What do you, what, I know that's a word. Focus group. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be putting together a focus group, and I need some of y'all to help me here. To be part of the focus group. It's only going to be just for a little bit. It's not going to be forever. To come up with, let's see what these areas need. Let's come up with a plan. Let's find out what we can do. What we can commit to. I want to look at some best practices. Those of you who follow me on social media, on Facebook, I sent out a, a call for um, anybody who's... Here's what I don't understand, elders, ministers. Preach, churches call themselves an outreach center. And ain't doing no outreach. How in the world? I go on your website and there is no outreach. The only outreach that you're doing is just jumping and shouting in church and that's it. So I want to look for, I want to look for best practices. Who is doing outreach and who's doing it well? Because if we don't have to, if we don't have to re reinvent the, 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 the wheel, we, we just get what we can and just do what we got to do. But this is ministry opportunity. This is time for us. We've been, we've been in these four walls. <laughs> God is kicking us out. <laughs> so we got to do something. So those of you, and I, I, I'm not going to have you to, <laughs> we don't have it set up anyhow. I'm not going to have you to call, to, to, text, to text outreach to 301-8625. Those of you who, who, who said, Pastor, I'm with you. I want to be part of this focus group. Just raise your hand right real quick. Okay, these preachers, I'm about to take y'all license from y'all. Y'all, why y'all raise your hand? What are you going <laughs> to, you got it. <laughs> what, you, what you doing? Y'all should be the first one. Next time I'll be preaching this Sunday by myself. <laughs> y'all funny. Okay, let me see those hands again. I, I need to see those hands again so I can make sure. Okay, got you. Um, praise God. Amen. All right. So I got to try to remember. Try to remember. <laughs> Everybody raise their hand. Okay, you got it. All right. So we're going to be down at, at Pax, at Towns, at Pax River. And um, we're going to be there on this coming Tuesday. This is, again, a time for, for us to make at least make a print down there. Um, the address is there. If you need some assistance, if you want to volunteer, see Sister Felicia and she can, I'm quite sure she can do it. I don't want Sister Felicia to, to leave on on um, on Tuesday, Tuesday night and say, yes, I can't do this no more by myself. <laughs> um, can't. All right, so that's, uh, that's, that's good. All right. As we continue to read our announcements, the doors, I wish I can really tell y'all, doors are, God is really trying us. I mean, for real. I, I see it. 
I see it. God is really trying us to see if we're going to be the oasis that we okay, claim to be. That's it. Connect groups will continue this Wednesday via uh, Zoom. Uh, anyone who attends must register to receive the code to participate. Um, this com- starting on this coming Wednesday, uh, Minister Santiago will facilitate dreams and visions. That's co- this coming uh, week. Now, let me just tell you something about um, the Wednesdays coming up. Thanksgiving is right before one of the Wednesdays. Y'all know that we don't have, usually have anything the Thanksgiving before the Wednesday before Thanksgiving because I know y'all going to be talking I mean cooking and, and, and so forth and y'all gonna, not going to be want to be on so we're going to we're not going to have anything on that particular Wednesday on that particular Wednesday so it'll equal up to four four Wednesdays baby, baby dedication last week was supposed to be the last week um, but today is really the absolute uh, deadline baptism is scheduling is is scheduled um, for the second Sunday, and if you want to be baptized, um, definitely type baptism to 301-862-5630. All right, I think I'm finished. Oh, so it's, it's not ready, y'all? That media? I, I'm not sure what you're saying. Are you going to play it at the end? I'm, I'm finished. Y'all want to play it now? Oh, no, you don't want to play it now? Okay, all right. Let's stand. I think there's something else I want to let y'all know. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. Oh. All right. So, so the whole entire month, the whole entire month of um, of October is Minister's Appreciation uh, Month, um, and I believe in celebrating all month, all month long. And uh, I went to, I was at Pentagon, Pentagon, Penty. Gone City. Is that, am I saying that right? Pentagon? Pentagon City Mall. And uh, I, I went there to support Sister Tiffany. She, Sister Tiffany Majors. Um, she was having her, the grand opening of her, her book signing and so forth. And I believe in supporting. I honestly, I'm the kind of pastor, believe in support. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are a couple of things. Um, I believe in supporting the, uh, the members, whatever y'all endeavor to do, I believe in support. And so I went to the Pentagon City Mall and where she was displaying her books and, and, and so forth. And I said, well, um, since it's still Clergy Appreciation Month, uh, I'm just going to be a blessing. Let's just be a blessing to, to, the, to the ministers. And I had in mind, I had in mind, uh, that I have not been to that mall in, in a while. And I, I know that there is a place there in the mall where um, where they have uh, chocolate-covered strawberries. So, so I said, all right, so I'm going to go there right after I, I you know, show my face and, and support Sister Tiffany. I'm like, I'll just kind of locate some chocolate-covered strawberries to give to the ministers. Um, everybody like chocolate. All right, almost. Okay. <laughs> only to, be, only to, to find out that that place wasn't there. So I said, well, I got, got to present something to them. So I want to present a little something, something, something to all of our ministers. Thank you all for doing what you do at the Oasis. This is, I don't know, how do you say this? Law. Law or law? I don't know. I'm probably saying it wrong. But just a, just a little chocolate, something to sweeten you up. Um, and in in your life and, and so forth. So I have those um, for 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 you all. Um, this past week, wow! This past week we had two former members. We had two former members to transition. Um, people who were part of the ministry, uh, but they uh, moved away. Uh, on this past Tuesday, this past Tuesday. Uh, Sister Sandra uh, Jackson, and those of you who were back in, in the PDF days, I think it was. I don't know if it was PDF or always when they were here, but uh, she used to sound, she used to sing and sound like Shirley Caesar. 
okay, that that's that was her. She she, she was anointed to sing. So this past Tuesday, she transitioned after being ill for a little bit. I was supposed to be down. I, I wish the South would stop having funerals on Sundays. <laughs> but um, I was supposed to be down, but I decided to, to stay up here, and I'm glad I did stay. Uh, so the funeral is, is happening in about at 2 o'clock. Um, I'll try to post the link. Um, so let's remember Brother Jackson, or, or he's now Pastor, Pastor Jackson, um, and uh, the two kids, in, well, two grown-ups in prayer. Um, and also Sister Priscilla, um, those of you who, who knew Sister Priscilla, um, she was part of the dance team. Were you here with Sister Priscilla? Okay. Uh, so that's the Oasis Day. Um, she used to be part of the dance ministry. Uh, she transitioned. She was, has been, had been ill for about three. She's been in the hospital for about three weeks. And uh, they couldn't diagnose what was going on in her, her life, in her body. Um, so she kind of slipped away on this past Friday morning, I believe. This past Friday morning. So let's pray for uh, Tierra. 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 Keep, that, keep her in prayer. Um, so, yeah, so if you will remember um, the family of the Jacksons and the family of the Pryor, Pryor, Priscilla Pryor, 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 Priscilla, okay, yeah, Pryor, all right, okay, that's all I have for real. Um, there is, what, what do y'all have over there so that people know what's going on? A nice display. Um, you want them to pick up what they have some cards uh, it says stuff on that free it's free okay so there are some things that are free ladies um i'll, I'll speak on the behalf of the the video ladies whatever you do make sure you get check first of all check yourself do whatever is necessary um i don't know exactly what the procedure is i think you, you got to lift your arms and you got to feel around i think that Okay, um, y'all help me, help me, help me here. <laughs> okay, y'all already know. Okay, if you don't know, see some of the seasoned saints and they'll tell you what to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also get your mammogram. That is so, I don't care what it, listen, if, it's, if it can be caught early, that's, that's, you, that's exactly it. That's it. You don't want to be having that lump and you know it's there and you think that, you know, it's something else. Um, no. If you feel that lump, take care of it immediately. All right. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I think I've already talked about the guys. Um, go take care. Go take, go, go take care of your thing. I definitely men can, but I'm also looking at prostate. Okay. Uh, men, go ahead and take it, because I've already, like I said, I talked about that last month. Um, go ahead and take care of, of all of that. All righty. Next Sunday is Baby Dedication Sunday, and um, there are going to be a whole lot of folks up in here who don't know Jesus. I, we're not going to have communion next Sunday. I intentionally going to be very evangelistic in mind. Okay? You're going you're gonna to bring a whole bunch of sinners up in here. And I'm, not, I'm going to be preaching about money? What? No. No, that's not it. I'm going to be preaching about Jesus <laughs> and what he did on the cross. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take him, take him to the cross. Um, you know, I want people to think about their lives. So, you, you preachers, be, be ready to minister. Um, uh, praise and worship team. Where, 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 oh. um, you know, have something really nice and, you know, let folks know that Hey, this church is not a dead church. All right. Okay. All righty. I think I'm finished. I think I'm through. Um, Father, we thank you for what you have done in this place this morning. Thank you for the move of God. Thank you, God, for, for what we've heard from, from the ministers and from the preachers. God, I, I, I pray in Jesus' name that we would rehearse what they have been, what they've shared with us this morning. God, we really lay hold of the scripture that says, I have not seen, 
the ear have not heard, neither have it come into the heart of us here at the Oasis, the things that you have in store for us. But God, we rely upon the Holy Spirit to reveal and show us exactly what we need to do. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you would direct us. God, whatever happens, we don't want to miss you. We don't want to miss this season. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise and glory. Keep us, God, until we meet again on Wednesday night online um, or on, on Tuesday. We already pray, God, that those uh, kids, those families that are at um, Towns of Pax River, or, or pa Town of Pax River, they are ready to receive the ministry gifts of the Oasis. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for already for those individuals who are going to unite to this ministry. I thank you, God, for um, young people whose lives are going to be changed. I thank you, God, because I have no other choice but to believe that in Southampton and also at the town of Pax River, that there are preachers that are there. There are praise and worship singers who are there. There are prophets, there are apostles that are, are that are, that's in those communities, God. God, I believe that there are preachers, there are missionaries, there are people who are ready to minister the word of God. They are there. They just need someone. They just need someone to just help them to pull it out. So, God, we believe you for the salvation of every individual. And, God, for every person who accepts you as Lord and Savior, God, we're not just going to just be, uh, just say, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. But, God, we're going to rejoice because the devil lost another one. Hallelujah. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for keeping us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love y'all much most in the name of the Lord Jesus. everyone. My name is Tamaria Wilcox. I'm a board certified family nurse practitioner and founder of NP Family Practice. Today, I will discuss a critical topic and that is breast cancer awareness. Did you know that breast cancer is one of the most prevalent forms of cancer affecting women? Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers on women and the second leading cause of cancer related deaths in women. Breast cancer kills over 40,000 women in the United States each year and is the most common cancer in the United States. Breast cancer is also the second leading cause of cancer-related death in women. One in eight women will develop cancer, breast cancer, in her lifetime. Breast cancer is now the most prevalent type of cancer worldwide. If you think you are safe, because you do not have a family history, meaning that no one has ever been diagnosed of breast cancer in your family, think again. Studies show that about 85% of women diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history. Breast cancer is a sneaky cancer and will attack you when you least suspect it. It occurs when normal breast cells make a change and start growing out of control. And it can happen to both women and men. Yes, men can get breast cancer. Out of every 100 breast cancers, one out of 100 of them occurs in men. But men usually get diagnosed later with a worse prognosis because men are not thinking about getting breast cancer. Many celebrities have been very open about their battles with breast cancer. Celebrities such as Robin Roberts, Wanda Sykes, and even Matthew Knowles are all known breast cancer survivors. It is important to know that when breast cancer is detected early and treated, it is very curable oftentimes. In fact, breast cancer deaths have declined about a third over the past three decades. And this is likely due to screening, early detection, and better treatment. It is vital to know the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. Some of the signs and symptoms include changes in your breast size or shape, 
skin dimpling, nipple discharge, or lumps. Early detection of breast cancer can potentially save lives. It is essential to have regular screenings and home self-exams. They are just as important as well. It is also important to not delay scheduling your mammogram or consulting a healthcare professional if you notice any abnormalities. Beyond individual awareness, community support is fundamental. Embracing those undergoing treatment, offering a helping hand, or providing emotional support can make a monumental difference. Support groups and resources exist to aid both patients and their loved ones. I want to briefly discuss a misconception of breast cancer. And I want to say that breast cancer does not discriminate based on age, gender, race, socioeconomic status. Education and open discussion debunk milks, empower us to take charge of our health. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is not just about wearing pink. It's a call to action, a reminder to schedule your checkups, and an opportunity to engage in dialogue. By sharing knowledge and resources, we pave the way for a future free of this disease. It's not just about pink ribbons and slogans. It's about empowering ourselves and our communities with knowledge. Today, I urge you to spread the word. Encourage your loved ones to prioritize their health. Support those battling breast cancer and unite in a collective effort to create a world where breast cancer is no longer a threat. Thank you. Today, I want to embrace this moment and shine a light on an important health concern affecting men, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers among men, often showing no symptoms in its early stages. That's why routine screenings and discussions with healthcare professionals are crucial. Knowledge and early detection are key factors in successful treatment outcomes of prostate cancer. Although it predominantly affects older men, it's essential for men of all ages to remain vigilant. Awareness and understanding can make a significant difference. By educating ourselves and our communities about risk factors and the importance of screenings can actually save lives. I want to address a myth surrounding prostate cancer, and that is age. Age is not the sole risk factor, and young men can be affected by prostate cancer as well. By initiating open conversations, we can break down stigmas and encourage a proactive approach to health. This video serves as a reminder to prioritize health checkups and advocate for regular screenings. I want to encourage all men to discuss their health concerns with their health care providers. Together, let's spread awareness and knowledge to combat prostate cancer. Thank you.